The purpose of this recording is to give you an idea of how to use headings in order to generate an automatic table of contents for Word. Now styles are one of those features in Word that are a little bit counterintuitive. But once you get the basic ideas, it can be really powerful in helping you format a document consistently and with the least amount of effort. So I have a sample document here. I have a title, subtitle, a couple of main sections, and then a conclusion. Coming into it, everything is automatically styled in what's called a normal style. That's right up here. My normal style is Cabrilli 11 point. Let's say that your boss is a huge fan of Arial. Usually what you'll do when you want to style a document is just to select the whole thing. So for example, I'm triple clicking in this left margin here, which selects the entire document. You click up here in the font and type in Arial. That's normally what happens. The problem though is that if you have other things in here, that gets included too. Like say you have a table. And when you change the table to Arial, it messes up some of your, your cells and they're too wide. Or maybe you've got some copied text from another document that you want in a different text and not have it be changed when you change the normal style. So instead of doing it that way, of manually setting the style, we're going to change the normal style first. The easiest way to do this is to right click on the normal style and choose modify. Once you choose modify, it's going to bring up a new screen for us. This screen lets us set some basic settings related to our normal style. For example, the font. Let's change it to Arial, and we'll make the font a little bit bigger at 12 point. We go ahead and click OK. Once we do this, anything styled in the normal font is automatically changed to match whatever the normal style is. So for example, if I had taken some text and made it bigger, this is still a normal text. It's just that I've sort of manually changed it. I can reapply it by just selecting it, clicking on normal, and now it returns it to my normal style again. Okay, so that's not too interesting, but it's kind of the foundation for what we're going to do next. The next thing we do is actually come in and start saying kind of what types of things or pieces of our document are. So for our title, we're going to go ahead and choose title. Subtitle, we'll make subtitle. And in introduction, we're going to make a heading one. All right, so now there's some basic styles that are being applied to this already, and some of them are better than others. I think the heading one being blue is just kind of strange. Let's fix that. We do the same thing we want to do with the normal style. We right click on heading one, go to modify, and let's change the color to black. Let's center it, and then I'm also going to change it to Arial as well. And we might as well go ahead and bold it too. All right, so I've done these settings. I click OK, and I see now that the thing I styled as heading one has been changed to match my new style. As I scroll through my document, let's select some other things that are also going to be heading ones. So I have my main point. I click on heading one. Let's keep on scrolling. We'll find my second point. Change that to heading one as well. And I go to my conclusion and change that to a heading as well. Okay, now maybe I change my mind about something. Say my, my conclusions, I see, well, let's, I don't really like the bold. So we're going to go back to my heading one, modify, undo the bold, and click OK. And now not only does it fix my conclusion here, if I scroll up, it's also going to change my main point two and my main point one. Now the real value of this is this last step here where you're going to insert a table of contents. If you look at the top bar, so far we've only been dealing with the, with the home tab. It has these little style things here. And you might have even clicked on this little box at the bottom right hand corner. When you click on that, it brings up this little drawer that you can more easily find the different styles to apply to different things. For example, you can style something as a quote or as an intense quote. So let's go back and actually do references though. If you start clicking through the different options here, you'll see that under the references tab, you have this thing called table of contents. The nice thing is it's completely automatic for us. We click on it and let's insert the one like this called automatic table two. When we insert it, we see now that it's gone through my document and found all of my headings, heading one, heading two, heading three, and it's automatically found the pages for those as well. 
if I go into my document and I move things around a little bit, like say that I insert a page break here, insert page break, now go back up to my top, I can go back to my table of contents, click inside of it, and then click this update link. When I click the update link, I'm going to choose the entire table, click OK, and it's going to go ahead and change my page numbers for me automatically. So if you have a long document with a lot of pieces, this makes it a lot easier. The other reason that it's nice to use headings is that you can have more options for clicking around inside of a document. If you click on the view pane, click on the navigation option, and now I see that it gives me easy links to different parts of my document. I want to go to main point two, I'll click on main point two, my document automatically scrolls to that section. Now one piece of confusion I've seen when people start doing headings is heading one, heading two, heading three. Sometimes people will choose, you know, main point one is heading one, main point two is heading two, and so on. That's not quite what they're there for. They're really there to help do sub points. So say you've got your main point one. Underneath main point one, you have some sort of argument. Argument for main point one. I'm going to go ahead and style this as a heading two. If you look over here under navigation, you see how it sort of nests it underneath my main point one. And let's do another one as well. Let's do a follow up argument. Now I see I have my follow up argument as well. And if I go back to the beginning of my document, to my table of contents and update it, you will see now that it's going to go ahead and match what I have here on over here. Now one last piece you might be thinking of is why I chose styles title and subtitle instead of making these a header as well. Well the reason is with the table of contents. If you'll see what it picked up here, it only picked up headings. It did not pick up title. So by styling this as a title and not as a header, it keeps it out of the table of contents. If I style this as a header, my table of contents looks kind of confusing because now it also has title of document in there, which I don't really want. So instead, I'm going to go ahead and change it back to this style, and I update it, and now it gets removed from here. So this is a simple way of organizing a large document. It helps you keep the different pieces consistent, makes it easy to update, and really helps if you've got multiple authors working together on the same document.